Welcome back to Blender Daily. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can create seamlessly looping animations with geometry nodes in Blender. This tutorial is inspired by this awesome animation created by Sheep Films. Check out his website for more really cool animation projects. Alright, so in order to show you how this works, I already prepared a scene with just this table and a plant object on top of it. And I got both of them from polyhaven.com, which is a great website where you can get high quality 3D models for free. And in order to get started, make sure that both of those objects are in the same collection that we can now turn off as we're not going to work with the actual objects. Instead, we're going to bring in another object, which in my case is going to be a plane, but it doesn't really matter which object you're going to bring in. Then let's also rename this in the outliner to, let's say, loop. And I'm going to open up a new window and switch this to the geometry node editor. With the plane still selected, I'm going to click on the plus to create a new geometry node setup. And I want to rename this to loop as well. As we don't need the original plane, we can simply delete the group input node. And instead we're going to take the collection that we just disabled and drag and drop it into our setup. When we now connect the geometry to the group output, you can see that we get an instance of the collection. Now for our effect we need two more instances. One of them is going to be a really small one right here. And then we also need a big one that we can place below the table. So to create those duplicates, let's go into the geometry node editor and add in a joint geometry node. Then we also need a transform node, connect the geometry to the geometry and the output of the transform to the joint geometry node. Now we already have a duplication of our instance and you can clearly see this if I start moving it up on the set axis. And we now want to place the second table perfectly on top of the first one. So I'm just going to move it down a bit to let's say around 0 0.8 meters. Then I also want to scale it down quite a bit. So let's bring down the scale value to around 0 0.1. And we also need to bring it back. So on the Y axis, move it, let's say 0 0.1 meters. Okay, so with that, we already have our small instance, but in order to make it more interesting, I also recommend you to rotate it 180 degrees on the Z axis. Now we only need to add the big instance. And for this, we're just gonna duplicate the transform node that we already have connect the geometry to the geometry and again put this into the joint geometry node. Now for this big one, we also want to use the same transformations. However, we're going to invert them. So for the scale, in order to scale this down by a factor of 0 0.1, which is going to make it 10 times smaller, we're going to change this to 10, which is going to make it 10 times bigger. So now we have this really big instance. And we're also going to invert the translations. So instead of moving it up by 0 0.8 meters, we're going to move it down by minus 8 meters. Now this starts to match up, but we also need to adjust the Y axis, which instead of 0 0.1 meters is going to be 1 meter. And now we already have all the three instances that we need. The really big one, then the original one, which is a bit smaller, and the really small one right here. With all of them in place, we can bring in a camera object. So press Shift A and bring in a new camera. And I'm gonna place this right here in front of it. And in order to place the camera, you can simply use the shortcut Control, Alt and Numpad 0 to place the camera on your current view. Now when placing the camera, there are a few important things to consider. The first one is that we don't want to see this smaller instance from within the camera. So make sure that this is covered by the plant that we have on the table. And the second thing we need to consider is that we shouldn't be able to see the world background. So if I zoom out, you can see that we get this empty space up here, which would break the loop. 
So just make sure that you are zoomed in enough so that this isn't an issue. Okay, so now we are ready to start with the animation. And what might surprise you is that we're not actually going to animate the camera. Instead, we're going to animate the instances directly from within the geometry node setup. And this is extremely easy to do since we only need to duplicate the second transform node that we used for the bigger instance and bring this to the very end of the geometry node setup. And if I select this node and press M to disable it and enable it, you can see what this is doing. Before we get to the final part of this tutorial, let me quickly tell you about Rendero. They are a startup from Poland and provide high-end cloud computers for creatives just like you. Their cloud computers can be accessed anytime and anywhere directly through your web browser. This can be a great solution if your current PC is too slow for your Blender projects. And just recently Rendero updated their service and now the performance is even better. The best configuration contains 4 NVIDIA A10G graphics cards and 192GB of RAM. If you are interested, check the link in the video description for more info. But now let's get back to the tutorial. Now in order to animate it, first go to the last frame of our loop, which in my case is gonna be frame 100, so I also wanna change the end frame to 100, and then add our first keyframe right here. So on the transform node, hover over the values and press I to insert keyframes. If you cannot see the keyframe in the timeline, make sure that you have the object selected and that also the transform node in the node setup is selected as well. Then go back to frame 0 and here we're gonna reset all the transformations. So bring the translation to 0, the rotation to 0 as well and for the scale bring all the axes to a value of 1. Then don't forget to add in another set of keyframes, so again hover over the values and press I to add keyframes. Then in the timeline, make sure you have all the keyframes selected, press T and change the interpolation mode to linear. And when I now scrub through the timeline, you can see that our objects start moving. And when we go into the camera view and press play, we get this seamlessly looping animation. So I think this is a very cool effect that is surprisingly easy to create. And by the way, if you want to download the project files that I used for this tutorial, you can do so for free with the link in the video description. And finally, I also have a little bonus tip for you and I just want to quickly show you how we can add depth of field to make this look even better. For this select the camera, go to the camera properties and simply enable depth of field. Now everything is out of focus, so let's set the focus distance. Hover over the focus distance and press E to get this eyedropper tool and then simply click where you want to place the focus. Make sure that you really do this with the focus distance and not with focus on object because this is something different. Then you can also dial in the f-stop value to define how much depth of field you want to have. So if you bring this to a low value we have a very narrow focus and if we increase this value we get a bit more in focus. So I think I'm gonna bring this to a value of 1 which is still pretty small and when we now play this I think this looks a lot better with depth of field enabled. That's it for this tutorial, thank you very much for watching. Again, if you want to download the project files that I used in this video, you can check the link in the video description. I am Nick from Blender Daily, see you in the next one.